Sure. What is you know, what, what's relevant about that statistic that, you know, almost nine in 10 adults are metabolically unfit. We kind of take that one deeper level and I don't think it's too much of an assumption to then say, well, that might mean nine in 10 adults is, is insulin resistant. And un unfortunately, because of how we view the disease, which I won't elaborate on yet because uh, that, that is a different topic, but we, we don't diagnose the insulin resistance. We diagnose the manifestation of the insulin resistance. We tell the woman, you have PCOS. We tell the man, uh, you have hypertension, um, you have fatty liver disease, um, whatever it is, all of these disorders that, that the average um, clinician or the average clinical visit wouldn't imagine has a common core, but they do. And, and I certainly go into detail in the book, and that's one of the points of the book. It is to emphasize that there is a common cause of most diseases, and, and that's a good thing because then we can treat one thing. We don't have yeah. to give them a drug that's treating the symptom, which is really all a drug can ever do. A drug can never cure a disease. It can only ever treat symptoms. And so there's, I think there's something kind of liberating about this perspective that there is, and I'm not saying insulin resistance is the sole cause of chronic disease, not at all. I'm not so bold or naive to say that, but it is definitely a big part. And that should be good news because that is something that is one single point of attack that we can address. And, and so then rather than this so you imagine a typical overweight Canadian or American, and he opens up his medicine cabinet. He has to take his anti-diabetic drug, his anti-hypertensive um, drug to control his blood pressure, and and you know maybe one more for his erectile dysfunction. And then realize, I mean, imagine how liberating it is to realize, wait a minute, I can get rid of all those medications, which are simply all um, manifest addressing symptoms of one common problem, insulin resistance. And so to your question, uh, what about the solution? In fact, the solution for reversing insulin resistance is the same for preventing it. So I can kind of address both of those issues in one. And, and I believe firmly the most effective rapid way of reversing insulin resistance is to lower the insulin, change a person's eating habits to bring the insulin down. And now all of a sudden the body becomes more insulin sensitive and the lower insulin itself, those two events together, we have removed the insulin resistance and all those, all those surrogate or, or derivative problems begin to resolve the person's blood. In fact, blood pressure is so intimately a result of, of insulin resistance that within days of someone changing their diet to lower their insulin, they have to get off their antihypertensive medications because they start fainting. Their blood pressure has gone so low so quickly. And the same thing within weeks of anti-diabetic drugs, like Dr. Jason Fung has shown within just a few weeks of a, of a person changing their diet, they have to stop taking their insulin injections for a type 2 diabetic because th they don't need it anymore. Their, their glucose is going too low. So it is a, it, it's a phenomenal, it's a liberating, I've, I use that word too often, it, it, it's, but it is, it, it should be looked at as very good news where someone can say, I can, I can save money, I can save on the side effects of these medications, I don't like how they make me feel, I don't like taking them. Well, the good news is the gospel of this uh, is that you can change, you can change it. The food you eat is either the culprit or the cure. And again, if you look at it as a cure, you look at it through the lens of what uh, will this keep my insulin low? And that is why the default then, if we, if someone listening to this would say, okay, great, Ben, well, how do I do that? The solution is simple. It really is as simple as control your carbohydrates, avoid those foods that are spiking your insulin, which are refined starches, um, you know, and sugars, which are abundant. They're, they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere nowadays, whether it's Serbia or Singapore or Canada or anywhere else, they're everywhere. And the sooner we start controlling carbohydrates, focusing on the least starchy and the least sugary foods, then the sooner insulin can come down. And now the body starts to almost seemingly miraculously uh, heal itself, but it has to start with controlling carbohydrates. And then of course the person would think, well, what do I eat then? If I can't eat bread and bagels and cereal, then focus on protein and fat. Those are not only essential, there are such things as essential fats and essential amino acids, while there, as you know, better than most, there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. But I'm not saying don't eat any carbs, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but focus on the foods that we actually need, 
proteins and fats, and coincidentally have little to no effect on insulin. So someone can eat a big juicy steak and their insulin will barely have a hiccup. I will actually go on kind of a water carnivore week to just check those addictions, to put, the, to put them in their place. And when I'm measuring my glucose on my, on my continuous glucose monitor, it is a flat line literally the whole time. 